Over the last few days, I have received some comment on how to make a suitable inverter in a very simple way. So today in this video, you will see a beautiful inverter, which is perfect for running in daily necessities appliances. Although it looks small, but it is very powerful. With this, you can usually get at least 400 to 500 watts and which are made from very ordinary kind of thing. So I would request you to keep watching the video and stay home and stay safe. This video has been sponsored by GLC PCB. This company make prototype PCB with new generation technology. From here you can order up to maximum 6 layer PCB and most attractive offer you can choose any color of PCB absolutely free of cost. You can also choose SMT service to save your time or make your work easier. And of course you can enjoy worldwide shipping in just 7 days. All those fun offer you can enjoy for just 2 dollars. I must say for additional information you can visit their website. Before making an inverter, let's try to understand how an inverter works. First you need a battery and from this battery supplied voltage to the frequency generator board. And some frequency is supplied to the transformer by some kind of MOSFET to amplitude the signal. And how many hertz it will learn that depends on transformer primary and secondary coil ratio and core size. In my case this transformer needs 50 hertz signal. This is low frequency inverter. But if I were to use this type of transformer, I would need 30 kHz signal to 90 kHz signal which is called high frequency inverter. Next amplitude signal be supplied by MOSFET to the primary coil of the transformer. Right then transformer secondary coil produces 220 AC voltage which is enough to glow a flamen bulb. But sometimes the voltage drop can occur if the output is overloaded. That is why you need a feedback signal from AC signal to signal generator board. As a result the duty cycle of hours change randomly depending on load. So the voltage remaining the same. So guys I hope you understand everything about inverter. I will use SG3524 IC to make this inverter. It is a beautiful IC for this inverter and which is easily available in the market. To see how it works I visit their website and saw that various things can be done by this IC. So definitely I collect my inverter diagram from this website and as you can see I made the circuit in exactly the same way. And guys let's check out first. Since this IC required minimum 8 volt, that is why I select my power supply to be 8 volt and I connected the output voltage to the positive and negative of this circuit. Then I connected the input signal of my oscilloscope to the output signal of this board. And guys you can see my oscilloscope is showing some square wave signal. But the frequency is around 60 Hz which is not suitable for this inverter. So I have to select this frequency to 50 Hz. To determine the signal according to the circuit diagram a potential has been used which in turn allow you to select a signal from your choice. In my case I want 50 Hz signal. In that case I will turn the potentiometer and select 50 Hz. And see my signal is 50 Hz, its duty cycle is 50%. Next I will use a 1202 volt 3 amper transformer here. It is a original transformer. And guys my guess is you can get at least 400 to 500 of power from this transformer. In that case the transformer may get too hot. But in case of 300 watt it will be not a problem. And I have used this 5 point as the output female connector which I will stick on a wooden block. And then I will place the transformer on the wooden block and I will fasten it with wooden block with nut and bolts. Then I will use two small MOSFET to amplify the signal. And guys this kind of MOSFET you can get it very easily on a old motherboard. Next I connected the MOSFETs to the board according to the circuit diagram. Here I will choose a filament bolt of 100 watt for the first test. And that's what I added to my transformer secondary coil. And then I reselected my power supply to 12 volt and connected the power cable to this board. And guys you can see the 100 watt bulb was glowing properly. And guys the funny thing is that the MOSFET is normal heat, not a little bit hot. Then I will use 6 MOSFET to strengthen the inverter which will be connected threes in parallels which I will put on a copper board and solder them nicely. When you soldering be sure to solder very carefully so that ones does not get stuck with other. And lastly after properly installing the 6 MOSFETs I will place my signal generator board in MOSFET board at a 90 degree angle. Then I will skillfully connect the transformer primary coil to the MOSFETs output. And of course guys I don't forget to put a 10 ampere fuse here. Then I will use a capacitor for DC filter. Guys even you can install ampere and voltmeter if you want to analyze the volt and ampere which I put on the board by glue. Although there is no chance of MOSFET are getting hot anyway. Yet I have put the heatsink paste on the MOSFET to install heatsink. The result the general production and to be beautiful to look at. 
Okay guys, at the end of it all, I will solder the battery wire so that I can connect it to the battery. Okay guys, this was your inverter which was done very nicely. This is not looking bad, isn't it? After then I will use a 7 ampere battery to check the inverter survival and I will connect that to my inverter and look at the voltage and ampere in my voltmeter. So let's continue. At first I select my soldering iron maximum heat and then connected it to my inverter. This is a 60 watt soldering iron and guys you can see it's consuming current around at least 3 ampere and my soldering iron is heating up properly. In this case I want to check my output voltage and see the voltage is roughly around 190 AC and that means the voltage is is dropping so I turn the feedback potentiometer here I will bring it 220 volt and remember one thing once you set your right voltage no matter how much you load it will be always give the right voltage and after then I attached a 100 watt lamp and you can see this bulb is glowing absolutely fine next I want to run a 500 watt drill so I will connect the drill to this inverter and hopefully you can see the drill is rotating properly and in this case ampere is consuming at least 7 ampere current and guys, I must say, it is not a sign of inverter, but you can run all your appliances. This inverter will not destroy your appliances. I think this inverter is good enough for a small project. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section. So friends, that's all for today. If you like this video, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe my channel. See you in the next video. Stay home and stay safe.